Hey YouTube, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the, just to kind of show the setup here, what we're going to do is we're going to measure using a current clamp meter here, the actual current draw on all the six pins that carry the power to the graphics card from the power supply. So this is the NVIDIA RTX 4080 Super. So let's take a look now. And this is the official Corsair adapter cable. It has six pins like all of them, but because they're separated in this braided cable breakout here, you can kind of easily use a clamp meter to measure each one of them. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and turn on the meter, and we're gonna set it to DC, because we're measuring DC current. So if you wanna do this at home, you need to make sure you have a clamp meter that has the Hall effect, which means you can measure DC current. The cheaper ones of these can only do AC current, so Let's go ahead and grab, so it's going to be these six pins on the top row here because the sense wires are up here. So this is going to be pin one. And we're pulling 6.25 amps. So we're going to take that measurement, 6.25 amps. Okay, so that was pin one. Now we're going to move on to the second pin. So that will be this one. Okay, this one is pulling about 5.2 Three, we'll call it 5.3 amps, 5.3. Okay, pin number three. And keep in mind, the game has a frame rate cap of 120 frames. So here, this is pin number three, 1.78 amps. So you can already see this cable is not properly load balancing the current already. I can tell I'm gonna to have to replace this cable. I've only had this cable for like, a, I don't know, a year and a half. I barely did anything with it, but you can tell 1.8 amps, it's not evenly distributed. All right, that's pin number three. Now we move on to pin number four. And here I gotta make sure I'm not pulling the sense wire because those get in the way. So it's gonna be this one. It looks like 1.67, 1.67 amps, we'll just say 1.67. And that is on pin number four. All right, pin number five. Again, the sense wires on are on this side, so they get in the way. Just to make sure not, I don't use those. Okay, so pin number five. This one is one of the higher ones, 4.55 amps. 4.55 amps. Okay, and finally, the last one here, pin number six. Two point four two amps. Say two point four three amps. Okay, so looking at my numbers, you can see that two of the pins, or we'll say three of the pins, pin one, two, and five seem to pull the majority of the current, whereas pin three, four, and six are pulling a significantly lower amperage, which means that this is a bad cable. It means that it is not current balancing. Now, the reason why this is not, this is technically not a problem because the 4080 Super doesn't pull enough power to exceed the 9.3 or so amps, which is the maximum for these pins. If you want to know the maximum, you take 600 watts, divide it by 12, and then you divide it by 6 because there's 6 individual wires, and that would give you the amperage. So it's going to be about like 9 point something amps. So even though this is a bad cable, you can see at only 260 something watts, we're already overdrawing. Because if you do the math, you know, 260, let's say 266 watts divided by 12, divided by six, that's, this is the amount of amperage that all of these pins should roughly be around. So none of these pins should be over, we'll say four amps. And the fact that pin one, two, and five are exceeding the average expected current draw and pin three, four, and six 
are lower than the 3.69 expected amperage tells me that there is no proper load balancing on the 4080. It has no way of doing voltage division to maintain amperage across those wires. So now what we're going to do, we're going to do the exact same test, but we're going to test this with the 3090 tie, which has the additional circuitry to ensure load balancing. So let's see if the results are different using the exact same cable with the 3090 tie. It's that top row is the one that matters, not the bottom row. The bottom row is the ground. So the connector itself looks normal. So it's, you can't tell, I'd have to look under a microscope and it's usually not the wires because they're, you know, it's usually gonna be at the actual interface between the GPU and the actual Molex connector here. So we're gonna swap this for the 3090 tie and do the exact same test, but I'm probably gonna have to get another one of these cables because this is not good. All right, so here is the 3090 tie, and you can see it uses the exact same connector, and that way it is compatible with the 12 volt high power. However, this is the only NVIDIA graphics card that has this connector, which can also function without the sense pins being present, which means if you were to say, cut these sense wires, and you plug this in, uh, it may still boot up because the adapter that came with this card doesn't even have the sense wires. So it's the only NVIDIA GPU that is both backwards compatible with non 12 volt high power adapters and also forward compatible with 12 volt high power connectors. So now we're gonna connect this and do the exact same test and see if the current load is any different. You can see it's seated all the way on both sides so it's clicked in and everything's good to go so let's do the test okay now we've switched over to the rtx 3090 tie and the first thing we'll note is that it does pull significantly more power than the rtx 4080 super because this card has a tdp limit of 450 watts whereas that one was like a 300 watt tdp card so already the current amperage numbers are on average going to be higher, but we can determine what it should be. 5.19 amps should be around the average number that we can expect to read on the clamp meter when we go and measure this. So let's go ahead now and see what sort of results we get with the 3090 tie. Okay, so just like we did last time, we're gonna start with pin one, which is all the way over here. And let's take a look. 5.53 amps and remember the math said 5.2 amps is around the average so this is a good number so 5.5 okay second pin that's gonna be this one and here we go 5.38 We'll say 5.4. So 5.4 for pin number two. That so far looks pretty good. That's tracking with what we expect. All right, pin number three. Very different result from the 4080. This one is pulling 6.1. 6.1. Seven, which means that the 3090 tie is equipped with variable resistors and it's it's dynamically adjusting the resistance for this wire because if you remember pin three so the 4080 super pulled 1.8 amps on pin number three where the 3090 tie is pulling 6.1 which is more than our expected it looks like it's one amp over the expected 5.2 but this pin we know has some sort of issue in that it has you know higher resistance so there's less current that's able to go through there because there's no load balancing the 4080 cannot force more electrical current across that wire whereas the 3090 tie is like hey this thing has higher resistance so i'm gonna force more current through it by reducing 
the resistor on the 3090 Ti's PCB. The shunt resistor is actually dynamically adjusting its resistor to allow more even current flow across pin three. Now let's continue looking at the rest of these. All right, so pin number four, now we're doing the second half. Okay, this one's interesting. So 4.1, so 4.2 on this one. Pin five. Seven point two amps. Okay, that one is quite a bit higher than I expected. And then the last one, okay, so this is interesting. So three point eight eight, we'll say three point nine. Okay, so here are the final results here. So Looking at this, we can see that the 4080 Super, because it has no circuitry to load balance the current, it cannot influence the amperage across those six wires in any way. As a result, we're seeing significantly more variation because if the average for 264 watts should be around 3.6 amps, you can see some of them are like two amps above, almost two amps above that. Others are almost two amps below that. So it's like a plus or minus two amp spread. Whereas you look at the 3090 tie, this one, the one outlier is pin five and maybe pin six, but pin five being at seven amps is a little bit like, yeah, I don't know why that one's reading that way, but you can see that the, you remove pin five from the equation and the variation is not nearly as bad. So it's like plus or minus one amp, but then if you add this, then it's still plus or minus two amps. So that's, it almost makes it look like it's not doing its job, but I can tell just looking at the range, you look at the range of values, there's way more variation. You can say the range on the 3090 tie is from four to six amps, where the range on the 4080 Super is from 1.6 to 6.3. So that very wide range indicates that it is fully dependent on the cable being in pristine condition to help with ensuring that there's even current load across those six wires. Whereas the 3090 tie, you give it a bad cable, like in this case we're using a bad cable, and it's able to make do with what it has by using the shunt resistors to dynamically adjust the resistor values, which will in turn dynamically adjust the current values. Hence the reason why we see a more evenly spread distribution despite having a bad cable, or what appears to be a bad cable. Realistically, what needs to happen is NVIDIA needs to revise the PCB for the 5090 in particular. Maybe that's the only one that they need to do this for because that one has such a high wattage under load at you know near 600 watts. There's no margin of error. There's very little margin of safety for the cable itself. Hence the reason why we're seeing these reports of the melted connectors happening very frequently and the card hasn't even been out for that long. And there's so few of them. So I hope you guys found this video useful or interesting at the very least. Uh, NVIDIA definitely needs to revise the spec because this is almost unacceptable as far as I'm concerned, especially if you have a high wattage GPU that is very expensive. So once again, thanks for watching everyone and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.